In a world where trials and tribulation exist, it's only normal as Christians to always find a way to navigate through. That is why here on Divine Path, we teach Christians how to navigate the world using the Word of God as their weapon. Welcome to Divine Path. My name is Lilian or Gazi. Do not go anywhere. We'll be right back. Yo, welcome back. Once again, this is Divine Path coming to you from Trust TV. Do you understand faith? Do you know the kind of faith you need to operate with and thrive in the world today? Well, today on Divine Path, we'll be joining Reverend Nugwa Ada as she educates us on what kind of faith would help us thrive in the world today. Let's join Reverend Nugwa Ada as she gives us some teachings. Glory! Amen. It says, And I, brethren, when I came to you, I came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Glory to God. We'll read on, I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling, and my speech, my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Amen. Amen. How be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of this, the princes of this world knew. For had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, eye has not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him, but God has revealed them to us. Amen. By his spirit, for the spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. Hallelujah. But look at what um, it said in verse 2. Hallelujah. That's a strong statement. It says, I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Glory to God. I think there comes a time in, um, <clears throat> well, all the time really, where you should put away everything, maybe clear the table, amen, and leave the main thing. Praise God forevermore. Amen. At, at this point in time, I want to invite you. Decide that you know nothing apart from one thing. And that is Jesus Christ and him crucified. Praise God forevermore. Jesus Christ and him crucified. I determined. It's, it's an intentional thing. It's a decision. Oh. Do you understand? It's a decision. Hallelujah. Right now, as we speak, my house is leaking. The boiler has broken down, and water is pouring. The carpet is flooded. They called me to tell me, amen. Hallelujah. Different thoughts wanted to come to my mind. Oh, my God, will the house still be habitable? It's winter. There's no light. There's, oh, sorry, there's light, but there's no, there's no hot water. There's no heating. What's going to happen? Do I have to move? No, I determined not to know anything. That's my response. Save Christ and him crucified. That's my response. Glory to God. Um, <clears throat> Reverend has told a testimony, amen, hallelujah. Recently, Xavier went missing, you know, and um, it was a shock to all of us. Amen. Um, praise God forevermore. Emma was crying. Mira was crying. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. And uh, do you know what kept me? I, 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 
when Emma called, she was calling and I was talking to patients. I couldn't answer her. Then I said, send a text. You know I can't pick. And then she sent a text and I quickly excused myself, went to call her. She herself was even, didn't even know where she was because the bus driver had dropped her somewhere. And you know, it's, it's dark right now. It's dark, it's winter, it's cold. Amen. It gets dark around 3.30. In the, in the afternoon. It was raining. <clears throat> she was miserable. Cars were splashing her cold water on the road. You know, so I had to direct her first home. What can you see? Where are you? Amen. And then directed her home. Praise God. But then when I thought about my little boy out somewhere, and that bus goes to many different towns. It goes out of the county, which is like a local government area. County is a local government area. It goes to another county. It ends in another county. Amen. And I thought, Xavier is out there alone, not knowing where he is, in the dark, in the rain, in the cold. I said, Lord, we discussed this morning. Praise God forevermore. We did not discuss this. So because the, you did not tell me about it, it will end in praise. That was just my response. I throw myself upon your mercy. Amen. Upon the finished works of Jesus Christ, it will end in praise. Praise God forevermore. <clears throat> Amen. Of course, the same way with the Father, the devil wanted to bring all manner of Bad stories. If there's a bad story, you hear it as a doctor in the UK, unfortunately, because you are their pastor, you are their doctor, heal everything. Yes. Amen. So I wanted to bring all those bad stories, but I said, no. Amen. It will end in praise. I have to clear the clinic. I sent everybody away. This is what is happening. I have a personal emergency right now. Amen. And... Um, Printed out the bus route and said, okay, let me, I'm going to start at the end and start going from bus stop to bus stop to find this boy. But before then, let me call the police so that they will help me look for him. And they are the ones that said, oh, he's missing. We are declaring him a missing child. Amen. And then when they declared him a missing child, I got into the car to start driving. I called Reverend. I said, well, uh, I don't have time to, to ease you into it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Xavier is missing. <laughs> Amen. I actually felt sorry for him because he's so far away. You know, I, I, but I couldn't keep it from him. Amen. And um, I started going. It wasn't long that I started going that two people favored him. Amen and brought him home safe and sound. Yeah. Praise God forevermore. They brought him home safe and sound to us. Praise God forevermore. But you see, the thing about God's grace is that it will always work to favor you. When you activate it, there are any number of different outcomes that could have happened in that scenario. Amen? But the outcome that we have because of God's grace is he came home safe and sound. And that is our testimony. That should be our testimony every single time. Challenges will come. Grace does not mean that challenges don't come to you. Praise God forevermore. So stop asking, Lord, why? Why me? Why? Amen. That is the wrong question to be asking. Amen. Amen. Why did this happen to me? Why is it that? It, challenges will always come. Amen. The grace of God means that you always have the best outcome. The favorable outcome. It always works to favor you in the name of Jesus. Determine that you know nothing else. 
they are trying to tell you of another outcome, but determine. You, you have to now determine. You're not going to be saying what's going to happen. No. You're not going to be saying, Lord, how is it going to be? No. You are going to determine. This is how it will be. Because I know nothing else but Jesus Christ and him crucified. Hallelujah. That's where our victory lies. In the grace of God, in the finished works of Jesus Christ. Let me take you to Romans chapter 10. Amen. Something that the Lord was showing me as I was... As I was studying, Romans 10, um, 17. Glory to God. Amen. I'm going to go to, let me, let me use my Bible because, hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. Interestingly enough, it says here, it says, so then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Amen. And I started meditating on that scripture for a while. Amen. And I, I noted that the word cometh is italicized. Praise God forevermore. And these days, whenever I see uh, any word in italics, I'm always careful to meditate on it in a different way. I'm always, uh, I remove that word. Amen. And see whether you know, something else will come of that scripture. Glory to God. Because it was added by the translators. Amen. So I wouldn't be doing the scriptures any harm if I meditate upon it, look at it at every different angle. Amen. And in my meditation, I discover that, you know, God has, the Bible tells us that God has given to us the measure of faith. Amen. And when we, when we look at this scripture in that way and say, so then faith cometh, we are almost left with an impression that we, we didn't have the faith. The faith had to come. Amen. When we heard, praise God forevermore. Amen. But the truth of the matter is that you actually have faith. When you got born again, you were given the measure of faith. The other thing that we, we do sometimes, I think it's Reverend Mosey that talked about adding, putting generalized meaning to specific and different meanings to, that, that we, we kind of mix things up a little bit. The other thing that, that happens is we, we, because we refer to it as our faith a lot, we forget that this faith in fact is, is not originated from you. Yeah. Yes. Hallelujah. There is a human faith. <clears throat> and then there is the faith of God. The faith which we were given Amen. when we get, got born again. Praise God forevermore. And sometimes we, <clears throat> excuse me, we, we mix it up. And so we look down upon our faith. We think, oh, I don't have the faith to do this. I'm weak. I can't do it. You know, the situation arises and we're feeling helpless, defenseless, feeling as if we have lost already. When you have everything that you need to overcome. Praise God. You have everything that you need to overcome every single time. If it looks as if it's not you're not winning, just be patient, rest, continue in faith. You must win. Well, hold that thought. I'm sure you want more. Do not go anywhere. Right after the break, the show continues. Do stay. You're welcome back. Once again, this is Divine Path coming to you from Trust TV. My name is Lilian Ogazi, and we're teaching you about faith. I'm sure you want more. Now let's get back to Reverend Nugwa Ada as she continues her teaching with us on the God kind of faith. When she had heard of Jesus though, 
the woman came in the press behind and touched his garment. They took us from her, you know, being collapsed in the house, amen, to the end. But what I want to talk about is, you know, between when she actually came to touch his garment, amen, and when she was lying there, weak, tired, getting worse, bleeding, amen. What happened between these two times? Praise God forevermore. What happened? What God had there? Because a press is not a, a joko. Amen? A press, the throng, the, the um, disciples said to Jesus at some point down the line, thou seest the people thronging you. Amen? A throng is a squeeze. Hallelujah. It's a squeeze. It's, uh, recently, we, our queen passed on. Amen. Hallelujah. And um, they decided to celebrate her life and, and all that. We saw a lot of things. Amen. <clears throat> but what I wanted to put, bring out was I, I was watching on telly and, and the, the kind of crowds. I don't know if any of you watched some of it. The, 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 the huge crowds filling the streets. And we're not talking streets, some of these are avenues. So they are very, you know, very huge roads there before the palace and all that. Tr trying to come and pay tribute and drop a flower or drop a note or something. Amen. The crowds were huge. A sea of people. Amen. And I, I, when I looked at it, I would be in awe. That's a crowd. That's a press. That's a throng. Amen. That kind of one to pass through, to go through and get to the front. I could only imagine how you must be shouldering people, pushing, pressing, patting, trying to get across. Amen. Even an able-bodied man would have some challenge. <laughs> Amen. Even an, so, I, I, I want to tell you that this woman, amen, it was not her ordinary faith, not her ordinary strength. It was not the strength she had that got her through that throne. It wasn't, it can't have been. She came in the press behind, she made it to Jesus through the protocol, through the people thronging, everybody pressing, they want to be, she made it to come and reach the hem of his garment. Hmm. Something happened. Something happened. Something supernatural had started from the moment she started hearing of Jesus. Do you understand that? The Bible said, when she had heard of Jesus. This had heard eh, is a complete, a, a, it, it, it does not mean she heard it once. She had been hearing. Amen. And it does not also mean that she heard Jesus is a prophet. Amen. Because that would not make her go and touch the hem of his garment. Glory to God. She did not hear that he you know, came from Nazareth or he has been doing many, many, many miracles. That still will not make her go and touch the hem of his garment. Do you understand what I'm saying? She heard something specific. That he, there is a power upon him that also transmits to his clothes. Amen. If you can make contact... In fact, you don't need to touch him. If you can just touch the clothes, the power will come. Praise God forevermore. And her faith was activated. She, she received a faith. Amen. 
that began to change her story even there and then. Praise God forevermore. Let's read it. Verse 27. It says, no, no, sorry. Yes, 27. When she had heard of Jesus, she came in the press behind. She touched his garment. For she said, look at her faith in operation. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. Glory to God. She said, she kept on saying, if I can touch his clothes, this man is anointed. He is anointed with the healing power. The healing power is upon him. If I can touch him, even adjust his clothes, I shall be healed. I shall be whole. Amen. She was lying there weak. Couldn't even barely lift up her hand. Could barely take a step to the next room without feeling short of breath. But with the little breath she had, she kept saying, if I can but touch his garment, if I can but touch Jesus. Amen. Do you know that her faith was active and began to give her the strength to get to Jesus, to get even through that press to touch his garment? Praise God forevermore. It seemed as if nothing was going on. It seemed as if she was still sick. She herself might not even have realized that there was a difference. Praise God. But she kept saying, she kept saying, she kept hearing and she kept saying, amen. Focusing upon who? The word, Jesus Christ. Amen. She kept saying, she kept hearing. We don't know. We are not told how long it took between when she first heard and started saying and when she actually went. But at some point in time, after she had heard, been hearing, and been saying, praise God. She was no longer getting worse. Amen. She now has strength to move to the next room. She then had strength. She kept saying she then had strength to come out of her house. Praise God forevermore. And you see, faith, this, the thing about this grace of God will, will, will just orchestrate things, put you in the right place at the right time. At that, the time, the day she now had strength to, to get out of her house, that day Jesus was passing. Amen. Jesus was passing. And then she, she, she started going. Amen. She kept saying, and that faith got her through that throng. Got her through the throng. Impossible looking situation. I even said it before. I said that, that in the natural, that was a suicide mission. Yes. In the natural, it would have looked like a suicide mission. Where are you going to? Just like Reverend Geraldine, she took herself off her hospital bed. Said she's coming to camp meeting. They told her, you will die, oh. She said, if I must die, it's better to die in camp meeting. Because she was not getting better. She had stopped wee wee, you know. Her kidneys had shut down. She came to camp meeting. Glory to God. The faith is not your own. It's not your natural faith, but it has been given to you. It's supernatural. It does things without you even being conscious of them. Praise God forevermore. Let me tell you, somebody that has stopped wee-weeing, their prognosis is very low. Amen. Days to weeks. That's how we procrastinate. Amen. Are the vital organs still working? If they are not working, we have days to weeks. Amen. She had stopped we were in. She came for camp meeting. She was coming, I think she was staying in Pastor Miriam's house. Amen. Every day she will come, they will bring her. Do you know that her faith was already working? Then finally, hands were laid upon her. 
she began to wee wee. She, she, she regained strength. Till today, she is thriving. Hallelujah. I tell you, the faith that we have been given is supernatural. Amen. It's supernatural and it will do, it is the faith that will move mountains. The, the, the size of the mountain is irrelevant. It's irrelevant. It's not, it's not relevant, the size of the mountain. Praise God forevermore. The fact that winds are blowing boisterously and waves are, you know, crashing high is not relevant to you walking upon the water. It has no bearing. Praise God forevermore. This woman pressed through the throng, pressed through and came and touched Jesus' garment. Glory to God. How won the power flow? Her faith was working. Amen. And Jesus turned around and said, look, who touched me? They said, how, how, you know, they were still thinking naturally. Who hasn't touched you? Amen. Is the question we should be asking. Amen. Who isn't touching you? Well, but there's somebody that has touched me in a different way. Praise God. And that's you and me. Come out of the natural. Glory to God. Come out of the natural. That woman, if she had been thinking with her natural mind, she wouldn't have dared to go into that crowd to try to touch Jesus'. But by the time she was going, it was her faith that was taking her. Do you understand what I'm saying? By the time she had been saying it, and saying, even her thinking had changed. Her mind was renewed. She was saying, I can do it. I can make it. I can get there. Do you understand what I'm saying? She would have looked like a crazy woman by this time. Because anybody would say, what are you trying to, you want to go enter that crowd? You? Amen. They say, you want to enter that crowd? You want to go? You are going to die, oh. Not to mention that you are bleeding. If anybody recognizes you, you know, they are, you are famous already because they say they are passing your house. They say that's the house of the woman that has been bleeding for 12 years. Oh, you don't know her story? Kai, she has gone up and down. Even me, I recommended somebody to her, but nothing happened. Amen. If somebody recognizes you and reports you, that's it for you. They will cool stone you because you are unclean. Unclean. But you see, those inferiority complex were laid aside. Those inadequacy mentality were put to one side. Those shortcomings and how I can't, I can't, I can't. I really hate that phrase, I can't. Amen. Well, I hope you've been able to learn something and take something home with you today. Having said that, we have come to the end of Divine Path this week. Do well to follow us on all our social media handles if you have questions and we'll be here to respond. Once again, my name is Lilian Ogazi. See you again same time, same station next week. Bye for now.